As I've mentioned before, season 15 of Doctor Who was the worst in quite some time. It must have been obvious to everyone that they needed to step things up for season 16. Uh, the producer and script editor were still quite new, uh, so they stuck around, and Tom Baker stayed as he was still very popular. But they brought in a striking new companion, as well as a whole new format that connected every show of the season. And perhaps most importantly, they had brought back the show's best writer, Robert Holmes, to kick things off. So the season got off to a great start, and it would make a good jumping on point for anyone wanting to sample the Tom Baker years. The rebus operation has quite an unusual start, as the Doctor is brought before the White Guardian and given his quest for the key to time, uh, which plays like the detective on a police show, meeting his boss and getting his assignment for the week. Uh, with his white suit and wicker chair, uh, the White Guardian looks a lot like Ricardo Montalban in Fantasy Island, but that's probably just a coincidence, as it's unlikely the show was broadcast in the UK before then. Uh, the Doctor is so anti-establishment uh, that it's always interesting to see him go up against a higher power that he can't get around. Uh, the Time Lords used to fulfil that role, uh, but in the last two stories they've gone from being all-powerful and godlike beings uh, to corrupt and flawed politicians, uh, so they can't really do that anymore. And seeing Tom Baker's Doctor act all deferential towards the White Guardian, calling him Sir, is quite striking, as it's hard to imagine him acting that way towards anyone else. Romana is introduced next. Uh, Mary Tam makes a strong impression straight away. Uh, she may be younger than Elizabeth Sladen, uh, but she seems like the most mature companion in quite some time. Uh, giving off an aura of sophistication, uh, that's only matched by her intelligence and wit. Uh, her character is meant to be more intelligent than the Doctor, uh, but far less experienced, uh, which puts them on a basically an equal footing. Uh, in previous Doctor companion relationships, uh, the Doctor's always been the one in charge, uh, but now that they're both equals, uh, their banter starts to feel like something out of a romantic comedy. Uh, in fact, if you'd told someone beforehand that uh, Tom Baker ended up marrying the actress who played Romana, and then showed them this story, uh, they could be forgiven for thinking that it was Mary Tam who he married, as their chemistry is evident right from the start. Uh, the actual plot of the story is very low stakes, uh, much like Carnival of Monsters before it, uh, revolving around a pair of conmen how to make their fortune uh, by conning an exiled warlord. Uh, in the first two episodes they set up their con, uh, then it all goes wrong and they spend the next two episodes being hunted down, uh, with the Doctor and Romana caught up in the middle. Uh, there's not a lot of action, uh, but the characters are beautifully drawn and the dialogue is exquisite. The whole production feels like a lost Shakespeare play, if Shakespeare set any of his plays on Alien Planets. Uh, the actors are uniformly excellent, uh, Ian Cuthbertson as Garin gives a marvellously fruity performance. Uh, and you can tell Tom Baker had a wheel of a time working with him. Um, his sidekick Unstoff, uh, played by Nigel Plaskett, uh, seems like the straight man of the duo at first, uh, but when the con gets underway, uh, he shows off his comic talents uh, when he launches into his ridiculous story about Scrimmage Stone. Uh, if only Ian Cuthbertson had lived longer, uh, you can imagine Garen and Unstoff getting their own spin-off series on Big Finish, uh, much like Diego and Lightfoot did. Uh, Unstuff also gets to be part of another double act, uh, as he joins up with Binro the Heretic, played by Timothy Bateson. Uh, they're seen in part 3, where Binro unveils his theories about life on other planets, uh, which got him tortured and outcast from society, and only for Unstuff to reveal that he was right all along, is one of the highlights of the story. Uh, very few writers would have given such a long scene uh, to two such minor characters. And it doesn't advance the story one bit, uh, but it does wonders world building and character depth. Uh, Paul C does the Graf Finder K, uh, gives a wonderfully over the top performance, uh, chewing the scenery like a pantomime villain, uh, but he does get to show some depth towards the end uh, when he goes mad with grief uh, after his general is killed. Uh, it seems a bit callous of the Doctor to blow him up in the end, uh, but the Doctor doesn't have much to do throughout, uh, so I guess it's only fitting that he gets to end the story. Uh, Rebus itself is a bit of an odd setting, um, all the major characters are from off-world, so we learn very little about its native culture. Uh, the bizarre appearance of the Seeker, and the persecution of Binro the Heretic, uh, suggests it's a deeply religious society. And the fact that the Seeker's prophecy is all come true, uh, suggests that it's based on magic rather than science. Uh, which is something that the current show is heading towards, uh, so perhaps they could make a visit to Rebos along the way. Uh, there's even a kind of dragon in the Shrivenzale. Uh, which is not one of the best Doctor Who monsters, uh, in fact it looks a bit rubbish. 
uh, but I guess they needed something to keep the kids watching and it is otherwise a very talky story. Uh, the DVD has an hour-long documentary about the making of the whole season, uh, which I won't be watching yet. Uh, there's also a 19-minute feature on the story, uh, where all the actors talk about how much they fancy Mary Tan, and we learn how Paul sees the dog nearly bit Tom Baker's face off. Um, overall, it's an excellent story in terms of acting and writing, uh, but younger viewers may find it a bit hard going. Um, it's right up my street though, so I'll give it a 9. Uh, next week, Douglas Adams makes his Doctor Who debut with The Pirate Planet. I remember being a bit disappointed when I first watched it, as it's nowhere near as good as City of Death. Uh, but let's see what I think of it now. Uh, subscribe if you want to see my thoughts on that, or check out my playlist of all my Doctor Who reviews so far, linked in the description below. See you next time.